don't, we don't march and protest because we like to march and protest. All we want to do is be free. Sean King. From New York in his podcast studios where he does a daily podcast now. What's it called, Sean? It's called The Breakdown. The Breakdown with Sean King. All right. Sean King, good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm glad to be here. You know, today I have several important news stories to cover, so I'll just jump right in. You know, just 10 days ago, a white supremacist shot up a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, in the deadliest hate crime ever against Latinos in the entire history of this country. And it was the deadliest hate crime for any racial group in this country since 1921. Already, Trump and the White House are targeting immigrants again. As many of us saw just days after the domestic terrorist attack, nearly 700 immigrant workers were arrested and detained in Mississippi. And just yesterday, Trump announced a new policy that would make it difficult for anybody other than wealthy immigrants to ever be put on a path to citizenship. See, because it's 2019, the Trump administration can't create a policy saying they only prefer white European immigrants. But a way around that is to create standards that give immigrants who are wealthy a leg up in the process. And this is how they operate. When Trump ran for president, he literally ran saying he wanted to ban all Muslims from entering the country, even American citizens who might have simply left on vacation. But once he was elected, he knew that that policy could never be approved. So he simply banned people from seven particular countries, all of them majority Muslim, saying that it was a safety or security risk but it's really just bigotry by another name. Speaking of bigotry by another name, this week leaked FBI documents showed that Trump's FBI has elevated the risk of what they call black identity extremists while simultaneously lowering the risk level of white supremacists. Now we knew in theory that this type of stuff was happening, but the documents are the clearest proof yet of the reality that not just Trump, but the entire FBI has allowed the explosive growth of white supremacist domestic terrorism while focusing on a virtually non-existent group of black folk who pose no real harm to this country. The neglect of the Trump administration to focus on white supremacy in this nation has directly allowed people to be slaughtered all over this country. These white men are literally online announcing that they're going to do what they're going to do But because the government isn't tracking them, they get away with it again and again. I do want to switch gears for a second and close with two good news stories this morning. First, you all may recall the story that took place outside of Detroit where a 10-year-old boy was charged with felony assault after a game of dodgeball during recess at his school. So the, the charge was dropped. And after the public outcry, they did announce the charges were dropped, which was great. But I spoke to the family attorney, Maurice Davis, after the charges were dropped. And he said, and we talked about this on the show, that he wanted the local DA for Wayne County, Kim Worthy, to announce that she would never charge this child again because she suggested that she might still revisit the case. So thousands and thousands of people called and emailed Kim Worthy to demand that she permanently drop these charges against the boy that she vowed not to reopen them, that she apologized to the family, and that she announced that her office plans to change the policy, allowing young children to be charged with crimes after minor school incidents. Well, I am proud to report that just days after we started this campaign to call and email Kim Worthy, she did announce and she did apologize to the family. And she announced almost word for word everything that we demanded. She apologized. She said they would never charge this child again on this case. She announced that uh, they were seeing exactly what they would have to do to change the policy that even allows children to be charged like this in the first place. And here's the thing. The school to prison pipeline is real, and we have to interrupt it every chance we get. I want to close this morning with a book recommendation. It's a great book. It's the best book I've read this year. Is from my friend and brother, Dr. Ibram Kendi. He's one of the most brilliant scholars in this nation. And the book is called How to Be Anti-Racist. I'm actually hosting a public conversation with Dr. Kendi tonight in Brooklyn about the book. It's the best thing that I've read maybe ever on the issue of race and racism. 
And the fundamental premise of the book is this. You are either a racist or an anti-racist, but you can't simply not be racist. Now, a lot of people love to tell us that they don't have a racist bone in their body, but racism is not in your bones. And what this book breaks down is that if you aren't actively working to confront and dismantle systems and structures of racism, you're a racist. If you're benefiting from racism, you're a racist. And the book unpacks and explains what it means, and not just for white folk, but for all of us, to be anti-racist. Again, the book is called How to Be Anti-Racist. It's by a brilliant, compassionate brother named Dr. Ibram Kendi. Check it out when you can. And lastly, yesterday, we launched HowWeFlipTheSenate.com, and we now have 447 days until Election Day in 2020. And we're going to build a movement to flip the Senate away from conservative control. Experts are already saying that it's impossible, that it can't happen, that Republicans will still maintain the Senate. But my response to that is that we can always organize ourselves out of any predicament we find ourselves in. I got to run. Appreciate y'all. Take care, everybody. Hey, Sean, can I ask you one quick question? Have you ever gotten gotten a, a complaint from white people saying that you, Sean King, are racist? Oh, man. Well, I, I get... How many times have you got that? And how do you me. respond? <laughs> well, there is this typical response, and I'm going to talk about this with Ibram Kendi tonight. There is this typical response where you say black people can't be racist. And that's, that's a very popular retort to that question, that black folk can't be racist. Ibram Kendi actually says in the book, and this is, this is a black man, he says no Black folk can be racist. Now, I think what what people are trying to do is just shut down all criticism when they say it's not me, it's you that's being racist. But um, we have to all check ourselves. Like, just like anybody can be sexist, anybody can be misogynist, anybody can be racist. But white folk love to use that as a retort just to refuse to, to, to look introspectively at themselves. White folk hate to be called racist more than they hate racism itself. Mm. That's mm. true. Yeah. They, 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 loathe, they loathe the label. They're not necessarily always bothered by racism, but they hate being called racist. And, Sean, may I make a recommendation to you? Well, the, sure. The Brian Banks book, What Set Me Free. Oh, yeah. yeah and the absolutely. movie, if you guys have not seen it, and, and you, you and your family, uh, highly recommend that you all make it a uh, group effort to get out and see the Brian Banks movie. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. And yeah. I love and respect Brian so much and, and I'm so proud of what Sherry has done. And if people need to get the book, I've read the book. People definitely need to see the movie. Yeah. When you get time to read story. a book. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like, <what? laughs> you know, I listen to audio books. That's oh, how okay, I do. okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I was going to say, man, right. what's I, up? I, I don't have time on? to sit down and read the book. <laughs> and check out Delusions of Cinderella, too. While you're at. <laughs> no, don't you read that. <laughs> <laughs>